almost Friday. There we go. That's the other thing I was waiting for. Perfection. All right, guys, thank you so much for, again, for your patience and, and hanging in there with us as we kind of got through some technical difficulties. Um, we will have this recorded and post that out. And again, all of those um, who have registered on Eventbrite, if they were not able to make it or um, didn't hang on with us for it, we will definitely send out an apology and some goodies to make up for that with it. So again, my name is Liz Henry. I am the creator and founder of Market Center Mentorship. We are the productivity coaching um, platform for several market centers and Central Ohio and Ohio Valley region. And I'm also a coach with I Love Coaching and it is a whole life business coach. And I am joined by Mr. Ryan Leverett. Hey everybody, how are we doing today? I feel like I'm gonna wake everybody up. I know we've hit like, and we're actually gonna talk about why most of you guys are probably really slow right now. There's the science behind it, by the way, there's science. Um, I bet a lot of you are my bears. If you're my bear, you're, you're, you're with me on this one. Um, so today we're going to talk about 411135, which are tools to help you uh, strategize your goals by planning them out, setting course for check-ins and levels of accountability. Um, and I personally love to go even deeper into that and have a really clear understanding of when's the best time to schedule things, how to schedule things, um, and give you a little bit of tips and tricks of the science behind it and who you are as a person to make you more productive. So we'll be diving into something called chronotypes later. Um, I have a weird, deep obsession with uh, personality assessments. I love them. I love figuring out who I am. Um, and I think they're absolutely fascinating. So we're going to kind of launch into it. We will go over the big picture view of uh, what a 411 and 135 are over the first uh, couple of minutes, um, uh, first half of it, technically. And then we'll kind of launch into the chronotypes afterwards. Sorry, setting my phone to do not disturb because it's connected to my laptop and it will ring in. If someone calls me. <laughs> Uh, so we're going to kind of launch into this again, as I said, we'll go through the first part. Uh, we're going to talk about the six personal perspectives. Uh, I'm actually going to ask Brian to jump into that when we get to that slide. Um, it's opening us up to the right mindset to have when we're going into a learning experience, then the nitty gritties of what a 135 and 411 are, where do you start, why they're important. And then the second half, we'll jump into, um, how to figure out the most strategic way to plan your day. Mr. Brian, uh, could you please jump into the six personal perspectives, um, which are phenomenal, and we should use them throughout the entire day, whether it comes to our life or our business. Absolutely, but I'm going to need some help doing it. So I need two people who are on the call who uh, would be willing to uh, walk through these with me. So just unmute yourself and say me and, and your name, and, and we'll, we'll get after this. Sorry, I was touching stuff. <laughs> who wants to come on and help? We have a lot of patience, guys, so we, we can definitely wait. I'll do it, but I have to leave pretty soon, though. Okay. <laughs> I'm right here. The, the, who is that? I'm name? Maria. Maria? Did I hear somebody else? Okay, Maria, uh, let's go with number one. Commit a path towards self-mastery in a chosen area. Maria, when we read that, what does that mean to you? To become the best person in that area. Yeah, absolutely. It also means that we gotta keep things simple, right? Um, I love that. So focus on the 20% that matters most. I think a lot of us are challenged with this. I think um, every time we say yes to one thing, we have to say no to a, a different thing. And it sounds a lot easier than it is because there's a lot of priorities in life. So sometimes we're telling priorities no, um, just because they're not the number one priority. So the 20% that matters most is one of the perspectives. Moving from E to P on the 20%. This is going from entrepreneurial to purposeful. Everyone on the call today has a natural ceiling of, uh, of achievement, right? A natural talent. You can just show up and get a certain level of achievement done, right? Relatively unstressed. And then we bump up against the ceiling of achievement, right? And that feels a different way than it sounds, right? It's us running into roadblocks. It's us running into ways that we can't break through, either in business or different areas of life. And what that means is we're missing a sense of purpose in that thing, which usually comes in coaching or systems and models. It means we have to do things differently, right? Um, those are tough learning lessons, but they're worth it. This is my favorite, make being learning-based 
the foundation of your action plan. Make being learning-based the foundation of your action plan. This can be a challenging space to get to because a lot of us are ambitious, right? So we put the things on our calendar as to-dos and we just need to get these things done. But the truth is, is that we want to be able to learn through that experience, learn through the process, right? Um, progress is where true happiness and joy uh, lies. And so if we're not learning through that process, it's going to be hard to establish that. So that's my favorite. Number five is remove limiting beliefs, right? We've all got them. And it's like kind of cute how hard we'll fight for them sometimes, right? We will do whatever we can to convince ourselves that we can't have or do something. And that's always a fun conversation. And then number six, be accountable uh, and, and limit cycle. Uh, be accountable is do what you said you were going to do, or at least be real enough to look at what you said, look at what you did, and be real about it and know the truth behind what's going on right? Only, only then can you actually move forward. And so these six things pop up in life throughout the day, throughout the week and throughout the month. We're always living in one of these, right? Where we can, we can grow and we can get better. And, and sometimes you'll live in one for a long time, Liz. Sometimes you'll, <laughs> you'll be living in number three and you can feel it, right? And it's a process. But this is the, the perspectives that Gary shaped years ago. And they serve as kind of a guiding light, kind of laws, right? To live by and to focus on. Absolutely. And, and, and on, so Brian is uh, my business coach and he holds me accountable. And in a 30 minute call, I, we will probably touch on like four out of the six of these most of the time where he'll be like, all right, is that, is that true? Or is that a limiting belief? Ugh. Okay. No, it's not true. It's a story and narrative I created myself. So working through it. So it's a constant, constant uh, work in progress. The really great thing to keep in mind with it. And, and you're probably thinking, how is this correlated to what you're talking about? Um, the big picture on it is, as we're going into your 411 and 135, we're talking about your goals, where you want your life to be. And that's kind of a big deal, planning your life. Like that's when you take a step back and think about it, you are making the conscientious decision of what is going to happen to you and your world at all times. And how do we help you make it the best possible way? That is where we get into what is a 135 and a 411. Um, for those who don't know me, planning is my love language. If I, I, I love it. It is just it's, it speaks to me. Um, it, it creates the organization and the chaos of life. Uh, so the odds are in your favor. I jokingly say that as a one, three, five, and the big picture of what it is, is it means that you create your one year goal. Uh, you need it to be a smart goal. So it needs to be measurable. You have to have something that you're able to check off and say, this is my version of success. And I, yes, I hit success. And then what you do from there is you break it down into three priorities and you're kind of like, well, that doesn't really make much sense. Don't I need a to-do list? No, 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 no. Cause here's the deal. What we're looking for in that goal and what are the three things and three priorities that you need to do in order to get to that goal? So for example, if you're saying to yourself, I want to sell 12 units this year, then you know that one of your priorities needs to be lead generation, right? Because how do you get business is through lead generation. And then we break down it into five strategies and we break it down and we say, what is it going to take for me to make this priority happen to hit that one year goal? And your priorities should be so big, hairy, audacious, and strategic in what you're doing that even if you just accomplish one, it'll help you accomplish that one-year goal. When we talk about strategies, we're going to use the example again, back to lead generation. We know the things may be calling your database, getting your database organized, adding more to it. Fun fact, I was just at the Jason Abrams event on Tuesday, and they have data backing this when they say that there are more millionaires created when they have over 201 plus contacts in their database that they are actively, and that's the key word, actively pursuing and lead generating with. 201. That doesn't really seem like a lot. If you go to your cell phone, go to the contact, scroll all the way to the bottom and see how many people you have in there. I will guarantee you, you have more than 201 of them. And that's where you got to put your thinking cap on of what are the strategies to take, get me to my three priorities. Now, when we break down a 411, similar concept, kind of, sort of, but this is where we get into the more of the meat and nitty gritty. What we're doing is we're saying, okay, here's my one-year goal. 
Well, now here's my one month goal. We're going to take this big, hairy, audacious goal. We're going to break it down and we're going to say, okay, this is my goal in January. If I know that I want to sell 12 units, I know that I need, I'm going to use that MREA economic model and work my way backwards, that I need to have XYZ amount of buyer appointments, XYZ amount of seller appointments and breaking it down this way. And then I'm able to say, okay, in the month of January, this is what I need to accomplish. And it helps me towards my strategies. And then I break it down week by week, but here's the key. And this is the kicker. And this is where people sometimes get a little off track. Do not plan out every week ahead of time. You literally are going to take it week by week. So the things you didn't get done last week, you have time to make up for it. But remember that personal perspective about needing to make sure you're held accountable. You need to hold yourself accountable to it. Create um, that balance in your life so that you know exactly what you're going to be doing. And if you need to be held accountable by somebody else, this is where you partner with uh, another realtor or another business-minded entrepreneur, or you get a business coach. These are the steps that you need to take in order to make sure you're staying on track with it. Because what happens if you have you know, a goal, but you have no plan with it? Nothing really happens. So following a model, how does it really help my business? I get this question all the time. People tell me, you know what? I've never had a plan and I'm succeeding. Yeah, but are you, are you really? Is, is your, what the time you're spending on it really being used wisely or could you work smarter, not harder? Know what a model is. It's a pattern of something to be made. It's, it's a way that something happens over and over again. And you understand success leaves clues. And there's a pattern of what is working and what is not working. This isn't just in your life either. Think about this and think in your mind. And when I say this, I want you to instantly picture that person. Who is that person when you picture in your mind that you say, I want to be them when I grow up? They're the person that I want to be because they have successful business or a successful life. What is that that you want to do? And think to yourself, what is the success clues that they've been leaving? So think and look bigger outside the realms of that. And you follow those patterns and clues to create a model that results in the best results. Seems kind of really simple, right? It doesn't have to be overly complicated. And we really can, it, there is a really simple formula with it. And one of the things we want to talk about is you actually do it way more in your life than you ever realize. I'm going to only pick one of these because, uh, because time. We'll just say because time. Um, but here's the thing, pattern efficiency. You always get off an exit early to avoid a long traffic light on your way home. After years of the same route, you figured out how to save time. Pattern efficiency. There's pattern action, pattern schedule. You will realize there are things in your life that you are doing that have become models and patterns in your life to be, save you more time, save you more money, whatever the case may be. So why aren't you doing it with your business? And lastly, where do I start? That's kind of the hard part. You need to know what your goals are. You need to know where you're going before you can ever figure out and map out what that journey is. And this is going to be my big challenge for you guys. I want you to understand that the, you need to understand what your business goals are and what your personal goals are. How many of you, and I'm going to pause, wait, and call y'all out. How many of you actually have your personal goals written out for this year? Show of hands. I'm looking at you. If you don't have your camera on, shout out. Uh, Maria, I like it. I like it. And I love the fact that your last name is Outwin. I feel like that you should be able to use that in marketing in some way, shape or form. Come on, you're killing me smalls of that. But that's amazing. When we're setting these business goals, don't forget. Oh, I why do I have a sad face over here? No sad face. No sad face on this call. No sad face on this call. Um, you need to make sure you set out what those, those goals are. And don't think that because it's not January 1st, you can't create what those goals are going to be or what that plan is going to be. You can start at any point in time. You just need to know, where am I going? Where, what am I wanting to accomplish? And you need to know your big why and your personal mission. And people question me all the time. They're like, who cares what my big why is? Because that's going to be the thing that motivates you when you don't feel like waking up in the morning or getting your lead gen done. Brian, what's your, what's your big why? Well, I tell people, if you don't have a big why, then you have to have a big why, why the F not. <laughs> and, and, and I used to teach a class on it. And then there was an OP who was like, we probably shouldn't, you know, market. <laughs> um, but it gave us permission, right? I, I think, I, I mean, I'm joking, but I'm also serious that I, that happened, right? Is a lot of people feel pressure about having the big why, right? 
And, and you, have to, you have to seek that. You have to, I want to say have to, it's in your own best interest to find out why you're on this planet, to find out what your North star is, what's your aim, right? What's your vision, right? Um, and where you're headed. And that can change, Liz, that can change, right? Um, Absolutely. And so as we're starting that, right, as we're searching for that, um, it's an ongoing process. We have to ask the question, well, why the F not? Why wouldn't I do this? Give me a couple of good reasons why I wouldn't leave generate today and, and be real about them because then I can come up with counter reasons on why you should, right? And I think that question meets us more in the moment, right? Mm-hmm. Why the F would, would you not do X or Y or Z? And, yeah. Um, I think that's really good self-talk, right? And so, it um, is. yeah. And I love it. And so this is one of the things I wanted to offer. And this is what I kind of touched base on earlier is if you're having trouble figuring out what your big why is or your personal mission, my information is going to be at the end of this. And I want you to write down my email address and I will, I, heck, I'll even give you my phone number. Um, call me, let's sit down a time and let's just go through and figure out what that is because it's going to be completely life-changing for you when you figure out what it is that you want out of life. And lastly, you need to know your numbers. Um, And we're going to talk about pain threshold. And this is what I mean by this. When we think of that number, because typically our goals are going to be narrowed down to how much money I want to make. Not always, but think about it in your mind of what that measurable is. You have that number or that measurable in your mind and you think to yourself, okay, let's say I want to make $100,000 because every realtor I meet wants to make $100,000. It's a nice, pretty number. But if you only make 90,000, no, 80, 70, 60, drop that down until you can answer yourself. And you have to be brutally honest. Would I quit and walk away if I didn't hit X, Y, Z? And that, you know, is your pain threshold. Brian, what's your pain threshold on some things? Yeah. Tony Robbins talks about this a lot, right? He says, if you want to raise the quality of your life, there's just one thing that has to happen. And it's really that simple is you have to raise your standard, right? You have to raise your standard and that that's, you know, raising your, your, or, or lowering almost your pain threshold Just saying, look, I'm not willing to deal with a hundred grand anymore or 200 grand, or 500 grand, whatever it is, whatever the goal is. Right. Um, you have to be able to change that. Um, for me, um, I guess let's, let's talk in terms of running, right. Endurance sports, things like that. I have a standard on how my life exists in that way. I have a promise that I'm at, I'm in the trails every day. Right. You, every day right so gotta, no matter what we got to explain to the group first of all though brian runs 200 miles on purpose for fun so that when we talk about training this man ha, he he when he says i've got accountability i've got to hold to it i mean he really means this is the discipline that he has to have in order to accomplish his goals yeah, How many it sounds that? crazier than it is it sounds crazier than it is but um you know the um the, the, the pain of not taking that action daily is greater a long-term than the pain of taking that action, right? And that's something that I've just come to realize um, and that a lot of my success lies in me going to the trail every day and establishing that habit. That's amazing. So here's a breakdown. People like visuals. And for those who've asked, I will certainly, I will send um, all of these out to you guys, um, the slides with it. I also have a couple links at the end of this as well for informational purposes. I will 110% send those as well. Um, and it would be based off of if you uh, went through Eventbrite and I have your emails, I'll send it out that way. If you did not, uh, email me at the end and I'll make sure to send it over to you. So this is a 135 breakdown. I'm going to touch at a high level on it because we've kind of sort of talked about it a little bit. But again, this is, we have our annual goal. We break it down to what our priorities are going to be in order to reach that annual goal. And then we break it down into strategies of what it's going to require us to do in order to get to that priority or to accomplish that to get to our goal. Are we all on the same page? Agreement? All right. I love it. I see heads nodding. The four woman breakdown, a little bit different, but bear with me for a moment. When we're talking about your goals, again, I want to make sure you understand I want your personal in this as well, because when we're building a business, it isn't just about the real estate world. It is about our whole life. And we need to have that whole life balance. And what does that look like? We're always constantly striving to be better. And we need to grow on ourselves. That goes back to that, having a learning-based um, behavior or being growth-minded across the board. So when we're doing it, we say, how? what's our annual goal? How are we going to measure this? Breaking this down into my monthly goal, my weekly goals. And don't forget, 
I told you guys one week at a time, one week at a time, because it will overwhelm you if you feel like you have to plan out every single week. All right. How to set those weekly goals. This is actually number one. I learned from Ryan and he told me this, and this is stuck in my brain for, for a long time. If you could only accomplish one thing this week, is it number one? And the second one was, should you earn the right to focus on anything else? Is it number two? And when he first said that to me, honestly, my hackles rose and I was like, excuse me, earn the right. And he's like, think about it though. Have you done everything you can to accomplish your top priority? Well, no. Then what makes you feel like you can move on to priority number two if you haven't gotten number one done? I was like, oh, ho, 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 ho. deep burn. Well, what, what is this? Just your future self holding your current self in check. A yep. lot of times people think it's me or the coach or whatever. I'm going, no, the goal you set created a priority, right? Which created a strategy on what you needed to do today, right? In order to hit that goal. So if you don't do number one, your future self is saying, hey, you haven't earned the right to go to number two because we know that the one thing you need to do was, was this, right? So it's actually not me, it's you and your future self telling you, not, you can't do that, right? Mm -hmm. I know, but it's, it's, it's the coach that helps you realize it. Yeah. Uh, and so what is the one thing you can do to accomplish this? And this is my favorite part is if it's vague, how will we know when you're successful? I give a deep pause on that one because there's a lot of us that have these pie in the sky ideas, but we really have no idea. We're not clear about it. If we don't have clear intentions, how <laughs> uh, what is the one thing most likely to stop you? And what's the solution for that? And number five, Typically, it's going to be our limiting beliefs. I'm not smart enough. I haven't accomplished anything great enough. I don't have the knowledge. I don't have the resources. I've heard every excuse. I've given every excuse. And what is the solution for that? Yeah, and some of them are real. Some of them are, if it's not a limiting belief, it's a valid reason. There yeah. are reasons and obstacles that are around the corners, right? That are just waiting to jump out and stop you from doing what you need to do. That's that's called life. That's actually programmed in, right? It's I always tell people the BS is baked in, right? So we might as well get prepared for it because it, it's going to show up. There will be reasons why you didn't do your thing. So how do we identify those before, right? As much as possible and then and, and build out a structure around that, right? Understand that that's going to happen. Absolutely. And, and we still have to get it done. And here's the other, here's a great book for those of my readers out there. There's a book that we're reading um, in, in MCM called uh, The Shark and the Goldfish by John Gordon. It's a really, really short book. It's only 112 pages, 34 minutes if you like to listen to Audible. Um, but it's talking about how to ride the waves of change. Um, it's, it's a very easy read, um, but it's very powerful. And they talk about uh, very much a lot of these things. What's the thing stopping you? How are you going to find the solution for it? And what's your mindset about it? All right, we're gonna take a breath, breath for a hot, hot second. We have dumped everything at you about a 411-135, what that is, how they are structured, where to start, and what to go into it. We're gonna go into the second part of this, which is where we're gonna kind of, we're gonna talk about the thinking model, I think is what, is that what you call it, Brian, the thinking model? Or is it the one where you say, I want you to walk away with a thought or something to, to chew on in your brain? Yeah, a thinking model, so a snapshot that allows you to go back into where you were thinking around any conversation, yeah. Perfect. All right, everyone's going to put a, pull out a pen and paper right now or type this in, and this is what you're going to do. You're going to go to a website called The Power of Win, so T-H-E-P-O-W-E-R-O-F, win, W-H-E-N, quiz, Q-U-I-Z dot com. That is a place you're going to go. It's based off of book, a book called The Power of Wind by Dr. Michael Bruce. And it is all about chronotypes, which is what we're going to talk about next. What they are, how you can use them as a guide to help you with scheduling your life. Because as you begin to put together your plan and your 411 and your 135s, time blocking out your schedule of what you need to accomplish to get those strategies and those priorities taken care of is going to be instrumental. We're going to want to work smarter, not harder. All right. Chronotypes. Oh, they, people have no idea what I'm talking about when I say this, Brian, did you know what I was talking about? Not, not when you first introduced it, but I do now. <laughs> yes. Uh, I'm going to ask you what animal you are after this. So a, a chronotype is a natural inclination of your body to sleep at a certain time. This is not to be confused with circadian rhythm. 
So your circadian rhythm, it controls the day-to-day -day sleep wake cycle um, and releases melatonin in response to environmental cues such as light and temperature. But your chronotype is genetically in you. It is fascinating the science behind it. I, I was mind blown when I looked at it. So scientists consider it very difficult or impossible to purposely change your chronotype. Though it may shift through the course of your life, when a person's natural chronotype comes into conflict with the demands of their schedule, this is termed social jet lag. So I'm gonna bring up the social jet lag shortly. Remember when I talked earlier and I said, it's uh, past two o'clock, so some of you are probably oof, low energy. This is your social jet lag. Now there are four different types of chronotypes. There's the bear, the lion, the wolf, and the dolphin. And we're gonna jump into those. Brian, which one are you? Uh, it said bear. It said I was a bear. Yeah. What? Wow. You lion. Okay. Okay. I'm a bear too. But we're going to jump into lions. Lions are our early birds. Okay. Do we have any lions out there? I, ha I know I have a couple lions I know in my life. But think about this. Are there any lions out there? Are you lying about it? <laughs> no, I'm cheesy. I know. It's okay. Oh, you're my lion. Okay. Okay. We've got a couple in here. I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay. You guys are the ones that like to wake up early. You are my people that are up and atoms and like, I don't understand you. I don't get it. It's hard for me to get people that are, that are morning people. Oh, I went too fast. Heavens to Betsy. Technology, not my best friend. 15% um, of the population are lions. There's not a whole heck of a lot of you guys. You guys are kind of a, a, a fun, a, a little bit of a, an anomaly out there. So when you first wake up, 6 a.m. is a really great time. You get your day started. And they say scientifically your peak productivity time is from 8 a.m. to 12 noon. For my lions out there, can you kind of give me like a little bit of a head shake? Is this making some sense? From 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. is your most productive time when they say that you should do the most things with critical thinking. Your critical thinking. It's phenomenal. Like, so when you're time blocking out your things and you're looking at your strategies and there are certain tasks that take more brain power than other tasks, and we know all about what that is, they're saying schedule those between 8 a.m. and 12 p.m. And you're going to be more productive. You're going to be able to get through it more quickly and you're going to be more successful at it. And what they talk about is that wind down and relax period between 4 p.m. and 9 p.m. When you begin to slow down your pace, when you begin to slow down your productivity, and they say between 9 p.m. and 10 p.m. is the perfect time for lions to go to bed. Your traits are natural leaders, you're charismatic, you're early risers, and Richard Branson is actually a celebrity lion. And here's the really, really cool thing about this. Most COOs, most linear thinking people, people that go from A to B are lions. It's amazing to me when you think about it. You guys are my early birds. Now, here's the thing. Y'all are the ones that are like, all right, it's 8 p.m. It is way too late to be going to a party. If it starts at five, I'm in. If it goes beyond that, eh, hit or miss if I'm going to go. That's who you are. So take that knowledge of what is gonna be your peak productivity time, what you know is your wind down time and use that to your advantage. I have a couple more resources at the end of this that I will send to you guys that you can dive a lot deeper into what your chronotype is. Now, after my lions, there are my bears. So Brian, you're a bear too, I'm a bear. Okay, 55% of the population are bears. Bears are the ones that wake with the sun and go to bed with the sun. 7 a.m. is the perfect wake up time. And here's, I got to tell you guys something crazy. Like this blew my mind. So I have set my alarm at 7 a.m. for the longest time because I cannot get up any earlier than that. I physically cannot do it. It's just awful for me. I read the miracle morning and I tried to get up at 5 a.m. And I was super gung ho for about two and a half days. And then my body was like, no, not happening. So for me, I started setting my clock at 7 a.m. So when I began to dive into this and I discovered, oh, perfect time to wake up for bears is 7 a.m. I was like, oh, sweet baby Jesus, that's too, that's too coincidental. So these are the people that tend to be more traditional. They're the happy-go-lucky. We're the extroverted ones, continuous flow of mellow energy. We're the ones that are telling the great stories at lunch. We're the ones that are hyper out there. We're gregarious. We want to meet people. We want to talk to people. And our peak productivity time is 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. So at 2.30 start time, I already know I'm in a social jet lag. 
And I know this about myself. So when I'm scheduling personally out and time blocking my calendar, you'll notice all of my critical thinking is between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. So the wind down and relax for bears is 4 p.m. to 10 p.m. and going to bed at, at about 11. We are the ones that that wind down can look like sitting on the couch and hanging out with the kids while watching a movie as everyone kind of really decompresses from the day. And when I read that, I felt that. I was like, yeah, that's me. That's me. And one of our celebrity bear is Oprah. Lions, you ain't got nothing on us. We got Oprah. <laughs> And then we have the wolf. This is our typical classic night owl. They prefer to stay up late. They love to sleep in. Um, people with this chronotype usually feel energetic after they wake up and get another energy boost in the evening. Who are my night owls? Do I have any night owls on here? My wolves? Okay, wolves. You guys are my fun ones. Here's why because wolves are the ones that are usually more creative. You'll see here, they're highly creative. They're more introspected. They're introverted actors, uh, artists. Those are my wolves. So they wake up time between 8 a.m. and 9 a.m. They have a peak productivity in the middle of the day, but then really in the evening is when they begin to hit their stride. And they're the ones that are going to bed at midnight. Only 15% of the population are wolves. And so Alexis Ohanian, he is the um, creator of Reddit. He is a wolf. Which I found absolutely wife, fascinating. My wife is a wolf. I mean. Is she? Yeah, don't tell her I said that. She hasn't taken the test. I'm deciding that right now. Uh, I got lucky and I married a bear. Um, so I, I, luckily we're like kind of on the same, same pattern here. But um, there is a really great podcast that Dr. Michael Bruce uh, is on. And he talks about what happens if you're partnered with somebody that's not the same chronotype with you. And last but not least, oh, my dolphins. Y'all are my special ones. Uh, dolphins, our chronotype is based on the ability of real dolphins to stay alert even while sleeping. Um, they're best described as insomniacs. So fun fact, I learned a lot about dolphin anatomy recently uh, based off of uh, researching this. So dolphins have the ability that when they sleep that half their brain sleeps and half their brain stays awake. So they're able to watch out for predators, but the other part goes to, to sleep. It's, it's bananas to me. Um, they're highly intelligent people. They're scattered brained. They have bursts of creativity, um, but only 10% of the population are dolphins. Y'all will wake up really early. You've got peak productivity though, late in the day. Uh, you want to wind down, relax, and you go to bed late. You're kind of all over the place. Um, and our celebrity bear, or I should be dolphin, not bear, typo, my fault. Uh, Jackson Pollock, who is the infamous artist, which would make a lot of sense. Um, people that tend to be dolphins are the ones that are uh, the really highly, highly creative. Like think of people that are um, off in their own little world half the time. That's kind of what we think about when it comes to dolphins. All right, I'm gonna stop the share right here. Actually, I'm gonna go one more page, sorry. There we go. Um, this is the information I will send out to you guys as well. So the book I keep referencing is called The Power of Win by Dr. Michael Bruce. Here's an amazing podcast that he dives deeply into this one. And if you want to know more information about how to create a GPS in 411, Ben Kinney has put on a phenomenal video for it. And this is my information right here. If you want to reach out to me and we can dive into whether um, it's about how to time block appropriately, whether it's how discovering your big why, what your motivators are. I want to be there. I want to see it. So I am going to stop sharing. I'm going to open up the floor. Uh, we have a little bit of time. We have about 10 minutes left and I'm going to go through. I'm so sorry. I've got a cough guys. I'm going to go through and I want to hear from you guys. What is it is, what was your biggest aha from this? Did it make sense for you? Do you agree with it? Do you disagree with it? You know what I think, Liz, I think um, perspective number four is what I'm thinking about right now is, you know, make, being learning based foundation reaction plan. I'm going to, if I showed up to the call today and I just learned something or I saw something I need to learn, right? Uh, an assessment, um, a, my chrome type, my, my disc assessment for sales. I'm going, okay, now how do I take action on that? Like, what's my action plan, right? I, I know I'm not going to show up to this call and change my whole world, my whole life in, in one call, right? Or one training class. But there is something I can take action on and learn, right? That'll, that'll forward my progress and whatever it is I'm doing. And so there's a lot here that I still am not great at in 135s and 411s, right? However, coming to this class, right, and continuing to visit the conversation, I'll take away an action plan of the next thing I need to learn, right? 
And so um, that's just what I'm thinking right now in the moment is what's the one thing I can take action on right now on the call and go learn more about, right? But there's myself, my prototype, my, my, my business plan. Um, and that's what I'm thinking right now. Oh, that's perfect. All right. So what was your biggest aha and takeaway? What you want to learn more about? Um, so on my 411, you know, I have a very fluid calendar. It's simple. There's only three things I do every day, but they get moved around a little bit around the one thing. And so I, I've been, I think I will say I've been looking at it the wrong way. I've been trying to plan out the whole week, right? And in the 411, you're not supposed to, right? And so I'm going to go back to the implementation of how that works and, and learn through that and see if I can adjust the way that I'm handling my calendar on a weekly basis. And if I can have better success with the organization of that. Ooh, that's a good one. That's fantastic. Yeah, I uh, I actually, when I started diving deeper into this, I restructured when I was doing the things I was doing. And I saw an immediate change in yeah. the quality of what I was doing as well. And that was really, really big for me. Yeah, it matters. Your, my, your calendars, that is your life, right? I think sometimes we look at just a bunch of to-dos and going, when you look back at your calendar on a daily basis or weekly basis, you go, there's a snapshot of my life. That, that was life that week, right? Or life this week. Um, and so when I looked at it that perspective, I started to give it a lot more attention and focus to detail of, well, then how do I want my life to roll? How do I want it to feel? And how do I want this to play out? And so the insight you gave me on the 411 today was different than the way I was treating it. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back and I'm going to listen to this and revisit my weekly calendar. Ah, oh, sorry, my weekly life. Ah, oh, I see. Okay. I like it. I like, wait a minute. Hold on. Has the student become the teacher? Uh, yeah, I think so. Oh, a bit. Thank you, young yeah, Russell. <laughs> Jennifer, I see you on there. What is your biggest takeaway from this? I'm calling you out just because I know love and I know, like, and love you. No, that's fine. You know, um, I just, I had written down the things that I, I want to go back and really ask myself about were number one, commit to the path towards self-mastery in a chosen yeah. area. And number six, be accountable. We've all heard that, but the part that says live in its cycle, I thought that, so those are the things I'm going to figure out what you mean or what, you know, what it means to me and how I do that. Absolutely. And that's, that is something that can be really hard when you first uh, jump into it. It's definitely something I struggled with a lot because it, my brain just didn't click with it until I kind of had to rearrange and think, what are the things I'm doing over and over again? And it kind of goes back to that, that success leaves clues. Like what are, what are those clues and how do I restructure that? Awesome. Perfect. Patty, you were my sad face. Patty, why'd you sad face me earlier up there in Chicago? Um, the reason I sad face to do is because I'm, I'm so, I don't have my personal goals written down and I, I'm scattered on my business goals. So it's, it's that, that feeling of, I think the, the, the thing I took away from today is, um, getting really clear on what the goal is, because if not, it's, you know, when you go to accomplish the one thing, what would, what would you do? And I'm, I'm just traditionally, there's so many things I want to do. I can't, you know, it's like, do I start and stop, start and start, start and stop, or do I not start at all? Or, you know, it's, um, right. My life is in a little bit of a crisis right now. And I feel like one big limiting belief myself. So I've, I've, I feel like I've got a long way to go, but that um, You'll I'm going to do it. Yeah. And just like Brian said, when you, when you, there's sometimes you look at this and you can only get one big thing out of it. And sometimes it's just kind of like, I got to get my stuff together. And it's like, where do I start? And it gives you a little bit of clarity on, okay. I, 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 this is my sign. I got to sit down and figure this out. And if you also are self-actualizing and realize as well that you do have that limiting belief or things that are a mess, when you do that, it often can be like a relief off of your shoulders. Like, okay, I'm going to dive in and let's clean this up. When you, when you kind of are truthful with yourself and that brutal honesty can be really difficult when we're looking at what those goals are. Um, and that's huge. That's huge. Um, because sometimes when we look at those goals and this is the way that I interpreted it, for me personally, and one of the things I struggled with is when I set those goals and I looked at it, I also then had to look at what my flaws were because the goals were me wanting to be better, whether that be a better wife, a better mom, a better business owner, a better coach, whatever the case may be. I looked at it and I said, I want to be better. 
But that means I also had to have self-reflection and go, what am I doing wrong now? And how do I need to change it? And that can be really difficult for people. I think 2022 was a, a denial kind of, um, mm -hmm. how can I cover these, these inadequacies up and kind of denying that, that all that was there. So I think there's a lot of truth in what you're saying of, okay, it is what it is. Now let's just work on it. Yeah. What a brave thing. First of all, thank you for sharing what you just shared a couple minutes ago in the way that you did. Super vulnerable. Um, that made it worth showing up today, I'll be honest with you. Um, you know, to be able to verbalize that you feel a little bit lost in, in your goals. And do I start this? Do I stop this? And we're, you know, the, the, the analysis paralysis is real for all of us. Um, and you sharing that, I think you called out in a lot of people's heads what they're thinking and feeling too, to be honest with you. And if you ever want to go through that um, at all um, and get some clarity around it, I, myself, Liz, I'd be happy to visit with you um, for a little bit of time to, to see where you're at. But thank you for sharing that. We all go through that. Thank you, Brian. I appreciate that. I may be reaching out to you. Liz has my contact information. Happy to connect. Okay. Absolutely. And so, and that, that is hard. And I, I, I agree with the sentiments. I'm just so glad you guys showed up. All right. We are at the end of our time and I want to make sure I honor your schedules. Um, and again, thank you so much for your patience as we had a little bit of a late start with technical difficulties, but the fact that so many of you showed up to me, that just gives like huge, huge props to you one. And secondly, evidence that you guys do have a growth mind or growth minded, um, happens to Betsy. You are growth minded. Lord almighty told you it's after two o'clock. My brain's in wind down time. Yeah. My brain's in wind down time. I just put my information uh, in the chat for you guys. Take a look at that for contact information along with that uh, website for that quiz. I again, will be emailing out every single one of you touching base with it and don't have <laughs> to I know if you have any questions whatsoever, um, this is, this is something that brings us pure joy of, of helping other people accomplish their goals. So uh, Brian, anything else you want to add? No, I just, um, if you receive an assessment or, or the ability to take one, I would take it, go learn a little bit more about yourself. Uh, don't ever think you have to have all this stuff figured out in a relationship with all the material presented. Um, you just want to make progress today. So that's what I'd be leading with going, how will I make a little bit of progress today based off the class I just attended, right? Where's the win? Um, and those are usually really small and small wins lead to big wins. So um, where can you make progress today, right? Answer that question. Ah, oh, always wise. I love it. All right, folks. Well, you guys have a wonderful, wonderful rest of the day. Enjoy the rest of your week. Yeah. Um, we'll be back next month. See y'all later.